तो स्टार्ट हुआ है दीप के ओके सो वी विल स्टार्ट विद सी सी एन ए राइट वी विल मूव टू एनआरसी ओके एंड आफ्टर एनआरसी वी विल मूव टू योर एडवांस बीजेपी एम पी एल एस ओके एंड देन वी माइट स्टार्ट पैलो ऑल्टो और वी माइट स्टार्ट द एफ फाइव load balancer so few of us are are here like just to learn the ccna few of us are here just to learn these three module the networking module right and few of us we will go through till the last right cool so let's let's start with ccna guys right so guys if anyone any of you have any questions any prior questions anything you can ask anyone before starting anything any questions guys deep manmohan toja rajesh ranish rohin no question okay cool so no what to do let's start right okay so the very basics we will discuss first of all okay so as we know like when in the ccna uh, we have few things or oh, when we come into the networking right so we have few things to discuss right so today we'll discuss like a uh, few devices type right today we'll discuss about the communication type today we'll discuss about very basics right so if i just talk about the devices right so how many devices we can have in the networking let's say i want to do a networking right or i want to work in the networking companies right so any types of devices or what we what we can have any idea the very first one what we can count uh, router uh, router switch hub uh, hub okay server server um okay let me count actually server is nothing server is just a uh, is a combination of few hardware things right and that is just a combination of few um you can say components right that can be converted to the router that can be converted to the switch that can be converted to the hub right so that's a bare metal device when we say server that's a bare metal device with some os right so i'll come to this point why we are calling this server and what why we should not count this as a networking device okay and okay the security is palo alto okay so we can say firewall as of now firewall yes okay yeah and and if we can talk about the river bed okay so, okay cool and and uh, okay if i just yeah, very basic places. right we can have a repeater also right okay we can have the F load balancer also Yes. Right. Okay. Cool. So we will look about these devices only. Right. Okay. A modem. Ah, uh, modem. Yeah, we can count. A bridge okay. device. Ah, uh, sorry. Bridge. Yeah. And. And uh, sir, one more question. Like, uh, uh, what will be the like? Um. A syllabus here, the syllabus of CCNA. What we are going to cover here? Ah, uh, so Shalender, like as of now, I was not going to discuss the complete uh, syllabus, right? I think we have shared some content to you, right? So if I'll try to explain those contents, so it will take time, right? What we can do, you can get the content, right, and uh, you can go through with it, okay? But uh, where it is shared, the uh, content on your email. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. So, um, let's start with these devices, right? So, when we say the networking devices, few of the devices we use to allow a communication in a single room. We can say. to allow communication in a single building okay to allow communication 
between different buildings different building users okay to allow the communication between two cities and to allow the communication between two different geographical location users right so basically when we say the networking it means somehow what we are doing here we are just doing a communication uh for the in between users right it means some users will be sending the data some users will be downloading the data from the servers right it means what we are doing actually networking says share the packets to each other that can that user can be in a single room that user can be on the single floor that user can be on the single building the user can be on the on this uh, on the we can see in a different building right or into different cities or into different geographic location right now for these kind of design what we are doing here basically we are using multiple kind of devices to make the communication okay so when we say the router right So as of now, we are just doing a uh, discussion of the overview. Okay. So when we say router, router is a device. Okay. First of all, we have to discuss one more thing. Okay. Whenever these companies like introduce these devices, the router, bridges, switch hub, servers, firewall, repeaters, what are these devices basically? So these devices are the component of, first of all, if you talk about the bare metal device, guys, any idea what is bare metal device? Anyone? When we say bare metal device, right? So what is that part? run direct on the hardware okay without vm kind of any virtualization okay okay look when we say bare metal device right that is just a hardware okay when we okay let's let us talk about the laptop right let's say we have a laptop right and in the laptop, let's say I'll purchase the laptop without any windows, right? Without any, um, uh, Linux window, without any Microsoft windows, right? So what happened at that time, I'll be having only hardware, right? With the components that said that does not have any kind of operating system, right? So that box that, uh, that laptop is again called as a bare metal device. It means only what we have only hardware. We don't have any of the OS on the top of it, right? So that is called as bare metal device. Now, when we say I do have a laptop without any OS on top of it, right? What we do basically, let's say, um, if I'll try to install a windows XP, I will be having few, uh, few features over there. Let's say I need few enhancement, right? What I'll be doing over there. I'll be using windows seven i'll be having few more enhancement over there right now let's say i need few more enhancement over there even in the windows 7 right so what i'll be doing there i'll be using might be window 8 or window 10 right or might be window 11 as of now the latest one right it means what we are doing here when we are going to the latest version or when we are moving to the different uh different features right we are having some enhancement over there right now instead of using microsoft if i talk about let's say uh, on that bare metal device, I'll be using the Linux. So Linux has its own other features, right? Correct. When we talk about any other operating system, let's say we talk about the, uh, CentOS, we talk about, um, um, few more we have, right? Other, other, but those again, all those are Linux based platform. Okay. So when we talk about these platform, right? It means what we're doing, we are using these platform over the bare metal device right and then what we are doing over there we are trying to access those things or we are trying to access those features right it means some features will be here some features will be in the Linux, some features will be in centos right correct so finally if i'll use this one i'll be having a different kind of feature set i'll if i'll be using this one i'll be having a different kind of feature set if i'll be using this one i will be having a different kind of feature set right or wrong any questions till this point anyone uh, so sir what can be a perfect definition for bare metal device bare metal device that is the hardware okay okay sir now next thing 
when we talk about the router, when we talk about the bridges, when we talk about the switches, right? Okay. Again, if I'll come here, Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 10, Linux, CentOS, all of these operating system, right? These are basically, uh, we can say, uh, these are the uh, group of set of commands, right? It means I have one lakh uh, commands over there in the background, and then we are using Windows XP. Might be we have two lakh commands over there, and then we are using Windows 7, Windows 10, or uh, Linux, or CentOS, right? It means in the background, we have set of commands, right? To execute or to run any of the feature, correct? Right, guys? Guys, I think I'm clear with these things. Uh, bare metal yes. device, Windows XP, and your Windows um, 7. What are these things, right? These are clear, correct? Yeah. Uh, any doubt from your side? Anything? Guys, anyone, Simran, Sandeep, Rohan, Ranis, Rajesh, any questions till this point? Actually, that two things is clear, uh, Windows XP and the 7 and Linux, but uh, mm -hmm. the third one... Uh, okay, that's uh, CentOS. Again, that's a basically, again, customization in the Linux, right? Okay. So as of now, you can skip that part because if you go to the internet, right? If you check like how many type of OSs we can have. So Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 10, uh, Linux, these are the, we can say a uh, very non OS, right? But when you see the other operating system also, you will find N numbers of operating system in the Google. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. But again, those have some other features to do some other new task, right? You can use those features. Okay. But in the laptop, what we use, we use the Microsoft or we, we use the Linux, right? Yes. Uh, Manmohan, any questions from your side? No. Okay, great. Now, when we talk about these devices, right? These are again, let's say I'm, I'm, I'm working in the Cisco, right? I want to, I want to create a new router or I want to create a new bridge, new switch or any of these devices, right? So initially I will be having a bare metal device. It means I will be having a box that will be having few interfaces, few NIC network interface card, right? Let's say we will talk about my, about my uh, laptop that will be having a single NIC, right? But if I talk about these devices, these devices will be having n numbers of NIC card over there, right? Correct. So, yes. So as of now, let's say I'm trying to purchase a bare metal device from any of the vendor, right? So that will just provide me the device that has a uh, few storage. Let's say I do have few storage over here of the 64 gig, right? I do have the, um, the memory, right? The Ram I do have, let's say that's uh, eight GB, right? And then I do have, let's say, uh, 24 ports over there, or let's say uh, another device with same configuration with, let's say, um, four ports over there. So what we are doing here over top of the device, what we are doing, we are using some operating system. Okay. Not these one, because these we use for the user friendly users, right? Or we can say, uh, these we use to access uh, some GUI interfaces, some other things we use, right? But when we say, I want to do a communication between a user that is on the first floor to a user that is on the second floor. Okay. So I want to make a communication between these two users, right? Then what I need, I need a operating system or a box that supports any of the operating system that allow the communication from one, one user to other user. If you see the window XP, what this is doing, actually, let's say, uh, I'm, I will try to connect to you, right? What I will do over there. I'll open my laptop. I will open to the Google, right? And on the Google or on the zoom, I will open those applications and I will try to connect. It means this operating system is a way to connect with you, right? So we can say at the application layer, what we are doing here, we are trying to connect to each other, correct? So using some applications we are using and how we can open those applications using these platform, we can open those applications, right? Same here. Whenever we need a communication between two users, those are on different floor, different buildings or different geographical location, right? We need few networking devices. Okay. So we have a bare metal device. What they do, what the companies do, they create an operating system. So the router has an operating system, the bridge has operating system. The switch has operating system, the hub server. Okay. Server is again, nothing. 
okay that this is a bare metal device and we are putting some uh, some uh, windows xp we are putting over there we are putting some uh, virtualization over there so that is just a device we cannot see server is nothing basically or we can see that's a storage device okay same the hub will be having some operating system the firewall has an operating system the repeater has an operating system the load balancer has an operating system even the modem has an operating system it means they all these devices are having the operating system now if i'll tell you what is the base of this operating system anyone any idea anyone what is the base one of question regarding the server like uh, nowadays uh, virtualization uh, we use with the use of kubernet so we are using servers uh, with the help of vms and bring the same function as routers and switches so yeah. uh, what do you just say on that okay uh, when we say servers right so when we go for the virtualization thing and want to do the routing or want to use the firewall right so the even okay these devices what they do they offer a os with the vm support feature okay let's say if i talk about the windows xp right I want to install Windows XP in my laptop, so I will be having ISO image, right or wrong? That I will boot on my pen drive and I will just plug to my laptop and uh, it will turn it on and uh, the device will have the operating system, correct? Right, yeah. Manu. Same. Let's say if I want to install my uh, Windows XP in my laptop over the VMware, let's say. So for the VMware, I'll be having a. Um, I think that's a file extension is your. Um. OVA file, right? The OVA extension we use for the VMware, or we can say we use OVA file for the uh, ESXi server, right? That is a virtualization thing for the uh, VMware, right, Manmohan? It means all of these yeah, all of these vendors basically are offering the operating system uh, system for the bare metal device, the operating system for the virtualization also. Same here, these devices. Uh, we can exclude router, we can exclude bridge, we can exclude switch, we can exclude hub, right? Yeah, and repeater also. So firewall, load balancer, yeah, these two devices, right? These two type of vendors, or we can see the new generation, the S D N things, right? They offer the operating system for the bare metal device and for the virtualization devices, okay? So what we can do then? Let's say I don't have that much of uh, money in my account, right? But I want to use the properties of the firewall. So what I can do at that time, I know in my company, I do have a server that has, let's say, uh, five uh, TB storage. Okay. That has, let's say, uh, 500 GB RAM. Okay. And that has, let's say, two core, um, two processor with uh, 16 cores. Okay. So that time what I'll do, let's say I want to use a firewall property. So what I'll do, I'll go to the firewall company. I'll ask for the VM series firewall. Okay. And then what I'll say, just tell me the, uh, just share me the VM series. Okay. And I will just put the VM series on top of the server. Okay. It means now I can use those features directly on my server. Okay. On that bare metal device. Right. Manmohan. Your question yep. is yeah my, my my perspective was like uh, uh, as you mentioned that uh, we can use uh, uh, this server as a you know uh, dev uh, storage yes. device so yes. this can also be used as a you know communication uh, as a you know uh, between two users as a definitely. proper functioning of routers and uh, things like that yes yes definitely so guys once because as of now we are doing a discussion of the router device and uh, this bridge and switch right so when we talk about the very basic devices right we do not use a bare metal device or a server and we do not load that operating system over top of it we never do that part as a fresher or as a uh, as a, the routing and switching but when we come to firewall or in future we'll discuss the firewall or load balance right at that time, we will see uh, what are the possibilities we have to use these things. Okay. It means how many combinations we can use and in what type of design we can use and uh, what is the real kind of things that we use over there to use a device with the storage, with the firewall, with the load balancer. It means a single bare metal device I can use for multiple purposes also. Okay. How we do that part? Yeah, we'll discuss later, but not in CCNA. Okay. But Manmohan, if you have any questions, you can ask your questions. Okay, no issue. Thank you. All go till this point. Yep. Okay, great. Now again, come back. So when we say I do have a router, route, 
and I do have the bridge. I do have the switch. I do have your uh, modem. Okay, I do have your repeater. So when we talk about these devices, and the companies offer directly the hardware with the opening system on the over top of it. It means I'll be having a bundle over there. It means let's say if I'll go to the market, right? I want to purchase the router. Yes, I can purchase it. If I want to purchase a bridge, I can purchase it. If I want to purchase a switch, yes. Modem, yes. Repeater, yes. It means whatever I'm trying to purchase, what I need to do over there, I need to just plug into the network, right? And just I can just start using the device. Correct. It means uh, as of now, or we can say as a fresher, no need to take care of take care of the operating system. No need to take care of the like what operating system we have to use over top of these bare metal device on the router, right? So I hope I'm clear till this point, right? Now I'll talk about what are these devices. Okay. So I will start very initial with the repeater. Anyone, any idea about the repeater? Anyone? Uh, actually, we use the repeater like the uh, extend the, the kind of line. Like line, or line. Okay. Okay. What? Okay. Uh, anyone? Ashish, Deep. It is a type of device which is used to regenerate or boost up the signals. Exactly. So what happens actually in the background, let's say uh, we are sending some packets to you, right? And uh, somehow, or let's say due to some range issue, right? That is uh, about to drop, right? What we can do, let's say about, uh, let's say 100 meter, right? So my signals, I know my signals can be lost uh, after 100 meters. So what I'll do over there between 100 meter, I'll be use a, using a repeater. Okay. So let's say I'm here or let's say I'm using my phone hotspot. Okay. And I want to share some files to a user that is, let's say 100 meters away, but my hotspot range is just a 50 meter. So I know after 50 meter, my signals will be lost, right? Correct. So what I'll be doing over there, I'll be using a device over there. That device will receive my signals and will regenerate. It means what that will be doing in the background, basically, whenever we exchange any of the packet, that packet, anything, right? That send, the device is sent in the form of bits or weekends in the form of zeros and ones, right or wrong? Right, guys? So guys, tell me, right. all of you have the basic idea of the bits, zeros and ones. It means whenever we send any of the information, right, that is converted to the zeros and ones, and then it will, it will be sent out over the wire, over the wireless network. Right, guys? Jayad, Simran, Sandeep, Rohan. Yes. These things are clear. Right, sir. Right? Okay. Yeah. So what the device will be doing? The device will be receiving your signals or the device will be receiving your zero and ones. Okay. And what will it will do? It will regenerate or it will be doing one thing. Receive here everything just to copy and paste and send it to other network. That's it. Or the other uh, segment. Okay. It means whatever I'll be getting over here, right? I'll be just receiving those bits and I will just do copy and paste over the same network or over the other interface, right? And now the next device will be able to receive or this device will regenerate the signals over the Wi-Fi also. Okay. So that can be a wireless device that can be a wired device. Okay. So if the wireless, it will receive the signals, it will regenerate. If that's a wired, it's, it will receive those uh, information on the wire, right? And will regenerate on the other wire. Okay. So this is how your repeater is working. Clear? Uh, Any sir, I have yeah. a question. Yeah. Like uh, what the maximum range can be here? Like if a repeater device is regenerating any signal from one end to another end. Okay, so, that is the hardware capability. Okay, we cannot decide as of now. That is up to the hardware capability. Okay. And sir, uh, can we see a like uh, image of uh, a repeater device? How exactly it looks like? A uh, repeater can be in a different, different way because uh, we have n numbers of vendor. They offer the repeater devices, right? So uh, uh, we cannot say we have a standard. No. 
Okay. If I talk about router, yes, we have a standard. If I talk about a switch, yes, we have a standard, right? Because when we talk about the router and switches, we mostly go for the Cisco. And for the Cisco, yes, we know the devices, right? But even uh, in the router devices or the switches, right? We have other vendors and they have the other type of um, structure, right? So when we see the uh, structure of the repeater, so we have n numbers of repeaters, n numbers of vendors, they offer the repeaters. We don't have any any specific company or any any global company that's uh, that's in the market okay it is clear but sir, uh, but sir in a wire, uh, wire network you, like if i talk about a repeater device so if it is possible so can we have a look for a um, that repeater device in wire network only a single uh, image Okay, again, that will be just a box, right? It means uh, if I'll just tell you, I have a box and that is a repeater. That's it, right? Because when we say repeater, if I'll talk about the routers, right? I can show you the pictures. I can show you the versions, right? But when we say repeater, that is just a device, nothing else, okay? Actually, sir, what I have seen over the internet about a repeater device, like uh, for uh, input uh, signals, for uh -huh. uh, signal, uh, there can be a single port. But for the outgoing port, there can be multiple ports. So, like, I want to know, like, what is the use of multiple ports over there? Okay, again, same thing. Let's say you want to regenerate your signals for multiple devices. Okay, or you have multiple, let's say, um, let's say I'm here, I'm sitting here, I want to send the signals out to, uh, let's say, to first building, to second building, to third building, to the fourth building. And I, that's a wired network, right? So what I'll be doing over there, I will not connect five or four devices over there, right? I'll just uh, send uh, signals to a single box and that will regenerate just like a switch again. Okay. That is fine. And, uh, but uh, if these devices are uh, going to send the information from their side to uh, PC number one, mm -hmm. then how it can be possible? Okay. So um we are just generating the signals right so yes. it will send out here right they will receive out here okay i'm not sure what device you have seen over there right and okay. you think it's one single we have for the input okay you can share the picture uh, if you have um, okay i will share it later yeah on the whatsapp you can share okay so guys so when we say the repeaters right so we have a device that will uh, receive the signals okay and that will regenerate your signals to for the next device or we can say for the next wired device okay so uh, so booster and repeater both are same or uh, we can, yes a... yes both are same booster when we say booster right so that covers a wide range of the uh, network right when we say repeater they we use repeaters for the shorter range okay so the name is clear repeater we use this to uh, region the signals now in the new technologies we are using the uh, booster name because that boosters will cover your max to max like we can say one kilometer two kilometer ranges right okay yeah any questions guys anyone okay now let us move to the second one that's modem okay modem i'll go later right let me start with bridge or a uh, hub Uh, sir, uh, a very basic question like uh, what can be the maximum range uh, that uh, we can cover uh, through a repeater device? Again, uh, Shalin, the right exactly I told you that is depend on your hardware capability. Okay. But, but sir, like uh, just a number like uh, is it possible for the 5, 10 or 15 kilometer? Is it possible or not? Yes, that is possible. Yeah. Okay. That is possible. Because once you start working in the industry, right? So we have few of the devices that generate your signals. Uh, I have seen a device uh, for the five kilometer even, right? So yeah, we can have, but again, that's a, uh, that depends on your vendor, that depends on your capability. Okay. Yes, definitely so. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, guys, any idea what is hub? Hub is like a plug and play, sir. Okay. And? Hub is like a, a switch, but the switch is a manageable device. But hub is, okay. hub is not a manageable device. 
okay 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 let's do one thing guys uh, before going moving to again into the devices and the capabilities let us talk about few mechanism okay because once i'll start the mechanism of the and the devices right so i have to combine few con concepts over there okay so just skip as of now this part right the devices part i'll come to these devices okay because these are some these are some uh some bit level information right so let us talk about the features the other features okay now when we say communication so in the communication we can say i do have a unicast communication i do have multicast communication i do have the broadcast communication right so guys can anyone any of you explain uh, these three things anyone Unicast, single, multicast, uh, both side and broadcast is to every everyone. Okay, so when we say unicast, that is in between one to one. It means we are sending a device only to one. Let's say uh, as of now, I'll talk to just Manmohan, right? So it means we are talking, we are just doing a one-way communication or we can, sorry, not one-way, unicast communication, right? When we say multicast, so let's say as of now in this uh, group, how many candidates we have? We have 13 candidates, right? Now, if I try to explain something only to few candidates, it means I'm just delivering from one to many. I'll talk about the example here. Okay. And when we say broadcast, that is called basically from one to all, right? Okay. I'm sure this is clear. Okay. Now we will see in what case we will be using multicast. In what case we'll be using the broadcast. Now, the best example here we have is for the multicast that's a routing protocols right now in future guys once we will start the routing protocols those routing protocols will be multicast concept based Okay, multicast, it means the, those uh, devices will have a reserve address, we can say a multicast reserve address, right? Let's say I do have device number one, I do have device number two, I do have device number three, I do have four, I do have five, I do have six, I do have seven. And they are connected via a device, let's say like this. So we have these devices, let's assume, right? And what I'm doing here, let's say I'm using a protocol. Okay. So guys, do you know about the protocol OSPF or EIGRP? Simran, uh, Jaya, Sandeep, Rohan. Yes. Yeah. yes. No, sir. Okay. If you don't know, no worries. Okay. That is just a protocol to make a communication between two devices. I'll discuss later. No worries. Let's assume. Okay. Let's assume on R2, we are using EIGRP. On R3, we are using AIGRP. On R4, we are using OSPF. R5, we are using OSPF. R6, we are using OSPF. And on R7, we are using AIGRP. So whenever we run any of these multicast protocol, they actually start listening some addresses. So if I talk about AIGRP, 224.0.0.10, 224.0.0.10, Two two four dot zero dot zero dot five and same here dot five and same here dot ten. It means now, if I will configure here OSPF <clears throat> and whenever this device will be sending the packet out. So in this segment, one two three four five six. We have six devices, but only the devices those are the part of the OSPF. They can only listen, right? If I will use EIGRP on this device, so only. The device, those are having the EIGRP information, right? They can only listen the packet. So this is how we are doing a multicast. It means from one to many, not to all. Clear? Any questions? Any doubt? No, sir. Sir, so, uh, one question. Yes. Then how will you identify the EIGRP and... Uh... Okay. Yeah. Again, uh, Dilip, yeah. when we come to the protocols, I'll discuss later. Don't worry. As of now, I was just using example. We have two kind of things. One is EIGRP, one is OSPF. They have their own addresses, right? It is okay. like your surname, let's say, right? Uh, let's say we have few guys over there. One, two, three, four, five, and six, right? And few of them are having a surname that is, let's say, um, Agarwal, right? And few of them are having, let's say, a surname, um, let's say, with the Verma, right? 
now one guy is here okay so that want to call a person that has a surname of the verma right so when it will call out right it means only these users will give reply and whenever it will call out the agarwal right only these users will give reply right or whenever it will introduce something to agarwal so only they will receive it correct it means we are doing one to many not to one to all right it is clear it means one to a group of users to a group of users clear yes guys multicast is clear to everyone hello yes yes sir okay so when we say multicast that is one to many and to a group of users right cool and guys one more thing when we uh, when we do this uh, basics right so it might take um, um six classes to finish these things or might be four classes right so guys after the after the uh, basics right we will have a, a technical round we can say right and if we score more than 70 more than 80 then we will move to the next part okay to the switching part okay so just make sure you are learning everything from scratch okay and if you have any doubt you can ask your questions okay okay now when we say one to all that's a broadcast that is uh that is clear to the world that is one to all it means i am trying to send something to all the users right so just tell me any questions in these communication method no no okay great uh renish rohan rajesh pooja no any... question no great. question Yes, clear. Great. Okay. One we have is way of communication. Okay. So one we say is simplex. Okay, why we are learning these things? Because when you go for the device, right? When we talk about the router, when we start learning the switches, hub, right? That time we will be taking these concepts. Okay, which device supports which mechanism? Okay, so we have the simplex, we have half duplex, and we have the full duplex. So, guys, anyone any idea about the way of communication? These one. What is simplex? What is half duplex? What is full duplex? Actually, this is a second one-way communication. Simplex. Okay, so similar. What are you saying? Uh, what is uh, simplex? It's a one-way communication. One-way communication. Okay. One-way communication. All time, right? It means let's say we have a user here, user one. That want to do a communication to user two, and the way of communication is via this way. It means now if we are using a simplex communication, right? So always user one will be sending something to user two. Not user two cannot send anything to user one. Then that's a simplex basically, right? It is clear. Can you tell me the example of the simplex? Like any example, any real time device that we use as a simplex. Uh, like a television, uh, we are they are sending us the data, but we cannot se send them back anything. Exactly, or we can say, let's say, if I talk about a mouse, also, right? If I talk about a keyboard, those are basically using a simplex communication, right? It means we just execute something over there, and they send to the device. We execute something from the mouse, they send to the device. It means that's on always a one-way communication. My device itself cannot tell what you have to do. Only my my uh, lap my uh, keyboard my mouse will tell what we have to do, right? So that's a one-way communication, or we say just a one-way communication uh, all time, right? Pooja, this is clear to you. Rajesh, Rohan, Sandeep. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Nice. When we say half duplex, then what is half duplex? any idea so data can be shared from both the ends but one at a time exactly it means again this is a kind of simplex but 
one way communication at a time now what happens here basically let's say we have user one okay we have user two okay and uh, they want to do a communication but what they do they supports only half duplex mechanism right now this user whenever this user will be sending some packet out to r2 right what will happen here only r2 will be receiving at that time once this data is finished let's say it has received everything now r2 can start working and can send the packet out to this user and if by mistake if let's say this this user is sending some data to r2 and if r2 will start sending some data out to r1 what will happen here there will be a collision right right guys yeah okay so guys uh do you know why this collision happens any idea anyone and what is this collision why we cannot send the data in the half duplex mechanism simran manmohan any idea i think protocols are defining the way oh. protocols are defining the way um okay we can say right because when we say protocols those are set of the commands right and for the half duplex also those are the set of the commands and uh, for the devices okay i'll talk about more no worries any other input deep anyone jay oh. adia yeah for example if it's a you know the single road so how we can pass the two cars in a single road it's a kind of single road so at a time we can pass the one data and if we are trying to you know so that okay. will be okay i'll explain point. when we say single road when we we have users right so the user supports half duplex or full duplex right they use the same wire right let's say we have a user here another user here right and uh, when we say um the half duplex right i'm using a cable let's say and that cable has uh, four pairs and eight wires same in the in the other way that uh, that has four pairs and eight wires that is fine but these devices the set of the commands they actually tell that's a half duplex or that's a full duplex it means we are using the same cable for the same communication for the half duplex communication for the full duplex communication but the set of the rules here are defining what we have to do it means this is like i do have a highway okay and uh, now uh, let's say if i talk about the highway we know uh, whenever i will go from here that is for the that is for this direction okay and whenever i will move to this uh, highway that is for this direction right but if i will tell you let's say we don't have any direction over there let's assume we don't have any direction over there okay any signals over there those will tell us which uh, which path or which way we have to use for the inside and which way we have to use for the outside right so at that time what will happen here all of the users will start moving like this and will start moving like this right or wrong so at that time what will happen over there we will be having a collision over there right now i'll come to the networking devices now okay okay again i have to discuss few more things here to make you understand about the collision and to make you understand about the one way communication at a time why that happens okay so when we say um when we say the cable that we use to connect a router to a laptop let's say i'll i'll be having a internet connectivity at my home right so my my isp my internet uh, provider that will connect a hardware a box that's a wifi box right and let's say i do have a laptop over here so what we do as of now we just use the wifi connections but let's say i want to use a wire, wired connection so i can connect a wire directly to my laptop right or wrong the same wire i can use between routers the same wire i can use between switches the same wire i can use between hub also right or wrong exactly the same wire correct because if i talk about that interface right 
that NIC card that use a connector that is RJ45 connector, right? And we use a cable that is called an Ethernet cable, right? So guys, anyone here that heard, that have not heard about the Ethernet cable, anyone? So I will explain a bit more. Uh, Rohan, Sandeep. There's an electrical cable connecting between two devices on, um, with wired. I think everyone has seen this Ethernet cable, right? Because everyone has a router at the home, right? And they use yeah. some cables kind of thing, right? Simran. Yeah, so copper cable, I guess. Uh, sorry? So, copper cable. Uh, copper is a, um, yeah, we can say. Okay, I'll explain a bit more. Okay, no worries. Okay, let me just. Okay, when we say copper cable, these are the cables we have, right? But when we say Ethernet cable, that has a other combination. Okay, so if I'll. Okay, you have seen these type of cables in your home, right? That is that is connected to the router. You see this one? Okay, so when we talk about the Ethernet cable, so that exactly look like this, right? Okay, Simran? Yes, sir. Okay, now when we say about this cable, if you can see here, we have four pairs, okay? And these four pairs are having total eight cables, right? About the color coding, which color we have to use, I'll discuss later. As of now, just understand what we have here. We have a cable that's a uh, that's a CAT6 cable. Okay, what about CAT6? I'll discuss later, no worries. You can just skip it. Just learn, this is your ethernet cable and that has four pairs and the four pairs, it means we have the eight cables, right? Cool, come back here. So when we say those four pairs, right? So what happens actually, one pair, sec the second pair, the third pair, the fourth pair. The one pair we use to send, the one pair we use to receive, and these two pairs we use for a different kind of purpose. I'll discuss later when we talk about the cables. As of now, I want to make you understand about the, uh, the concept, right? So one pair I'll be using for the send, one pair I'll be using for the uh, receive, right? Now, when we say send, that is TX. When we say receive, that is RX. So we call it RX and TX pin. Okay. So every single device, let's say I do have a laptop. Okay. That has that slot over here. It means that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And when we say a single pair, it means two cables will be out here to transmit and two cables will be out here to receive RX. RX, it means your receive TX, it means transit. It means every single device, whenever you see any of the device and that has that RG45 connector, right? That's load. It means two pins we are using for the receive and two pins we are using for the send. It is like a four lane highway. Two lane we are using to send and two lane we are using to receive. Okay. It is clear. Any questions till this point about the RX and TX? So we have eight pins over there. Two pins we use for the TX, two pin we use for the RX. Any questions till this point? Any so, question? Uh, just one, like why we cannot use this? So why two, two cables required, not one or three? Um. Okay, not one or three. That is just because, look here. Let's say I want to do something. I do have three tasks three tasks to do. One, two, and three. Right. And I do have eight pins over there. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what we have done basically to execute first task, what we need actually, we need at least two pins to execute second task. We need ex ex uh, at least uh, two pins and to execute the third task, right? We need actually the four pin. Okay. To make a proper communication. That's why. So those are, we can say standard we have. Okay. 
we cannot say why we are not using one why we are not using three uh, if let's say in the when when they were introducing the networking right or they were creating these concept right so they might have used one cable they they could be used uh, this three cables right but what they have done they have uh, fixed the standard that two cables will be used for the rx and two cables will be used for the tx okay okay yeah it means like we don't have any logic behind like why we have two, why don't have we have one, or why we are not using three over there. Okay, that is a standard that everyone follow. Okay. Now, sir, can I use single single cable for RX and TX? Uh, no, your signals will be lost. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Now. Now, when we say that half, again, I'll, I'm coming back to the half duplex. Okay. We have a box. Now, I know I'm talking about the name, right? I do have another box. Okay. These box, the platform here we have, they just support the half duplex mechanism. The platform here we have that supports only half duplex mechanism. It means we know that has RG45 connector that has RG45 connector, right? This is your first pair. This is your second pair, let's say. Okay. Now, okay, I'm not using the second, the third and fourth pair. Okay, because we use for a different kind of purposes, right? Now, what happens actually here, when we talk about the half duplex, they actually do not know which one will act as Rx and which one will act as a Tx, okay? They don't know which one will act as a RX, which one will act as a TX. What they do basically, let's say I'm getting a packet on this interface. What that will do if our device does not understand its mechanism, what is RX and what is TX? And yes, the devices, those are the half duplex devices. They do not understand which device, which interface will act as RX, which interface will act as a TX, right? It means whatever they will receive over here, they will send out to both. It means if I'll just use a device, let's say. I have a device over here. I have a user. I have a user, a laptop. We can see my laptop supports that part. Like which one will act as a RX, which one will act as a TX. Let's say this is your RX. This is your TX, TX and RX. Okay. So this will send using TX fine, but this device that is a half duplex device that don't know which pin will be acting as a RX, which pin will be, will be acting as a TX. What it will do, whatever it is receiving from here, it will be sending out here. It will be sending out here. And at the same time, if this user will try to send something out here, the collision will be happen over there. Okay. It is clear. Yeah, now clear. the half duplex, or we call it one way communication at a time. Right. So it means if someone asks about this mechanism, all of you can answer, right? Yes, sir. Anyone, any doubt guys? Dilip, Ashish, Deep. Guys, all of you can see my screen, right? There's no black mark or black boxes over here, right? No, sir. Okay. Because I have the chat window in the site, right? So that's why I'm asking. Okay, um, guys, tell me, uh, this point is clear. Anyone, if you have any doubt, any single doubt, guys, you can ask, please. Sir, uh, half duplex, you are telling that's one way communication. Yes. So one way communication happen, the packet will RX TX will be sending again. It's going or it will drop, sir. Okay, what happens? Yeah, what happens actually in the half duplex that as I told you that doesn't understand which one is that which one will act as a RX and which one will act as a TX, right? It means whatever the device is receiving, that will send those information out to both interfaces. Okay. okay and if in that condition, if this user will try to send something out here, there will be a collision because over the same segment, over the same link, we are trying to send from both sides and there will be a collision. Okay. It is clear, guys. That is clear, sir. What okay. I'm asking, what I'm asking the path to receive, you know, sir. Uh -huh. that the RX is sending to this user, okay? Yeah. So the packet is received to this user. Again, this user is sending to that uh, data to another person, means it will receive or not. 
No. Okay. You can tell me the diagram. I think I'm confused here. Let's say I do have a box that's only support half duplex. Okay, sir. I do have a user here. Yes, sir. Now tell me in the next user where I will connect to so this one. I, yes, sir. Okay. The so third user packet is coming to this user to another user, sir. Okay. Let's say this is sending. Ah, so sir. if we have both RX and TX that does not even that uh, that actually do not understand. So it will be sending out here. That will be sending out here. Yes, sir. Now you're telling this user want to do a communication to this user, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, same. It will be using TX to send the traffic and there will be a collision. Okay. That really doesn't matter. This user want to do a communication to any of the user that really doesn't matter. But whenever it will do a communication that will be sending something using the TX pin, right? And there will be a collision if that user is getting something. Okay. Clear. Dilip? Yes. Okay. Guys, anyone, any doubt till this point? Uh, when it is a uh, uh, need a uh, half to plus. Uh, sorry, Dinesh, come again. Uh, when what cost uh, we are using uh, uh, half to plus? Uh, um, you can give that example. Okay, I'll discuss. Don't worry, because once I'll come to the devices, right? I'll tell you uh, that time because as of now we are doing a discussion of the uh, mechanism of the communication, right? So when we come to the devices, I'll tell you uh, in which case, in which design, or what is that part, okay? Or in which device we use, okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now. Uh, so uh, number of pair will be to uh, for job, right? It cannot be like number, number of pairs. Okay. Uh, in the communication, the number of pair doesn't matter. At least we should have two. At least, right? Okay, Manwar. Yeah, I'm I'm talking from the perspective like half half duplex and full duplex. Okay. So in half duplex, uh, we have two pair. Uh, we have TX and RX, but it cannot be like in the same TX wire. They, they can do uh, RX also. Um. Yeah, because uh, the half duplex does not know about rx and tx it means there is no concept of these things it means whatever we are receiving just send it to the cable that's it that's the mechanism right okay yeah okay now the next thing that's a full duplex full duplex so whenever we have a device that supports full duplex that knows which one will act as the rx and which one will act as a tx Let's say we have a user, we have a device, we have a user, we have a device. Okay. The first pair, the second pair, the first pair, the second pair, the first pair, the second pair. Okay. Now this user want to send something. Okay. Sorry. Let's say this is saying, I know about the RX. I know about the TX. This will say, yes, I know about the TX. I know about the RX. That's a full duplex device. Okay. This is TX. Let's say this is RX. This is RX and this is TX. Let's say this will exit TX, RX. Okay. TX and RX. Any questions till this point? Because all these devices, they support a full duplex and they know about the RX and TX pin. Clear? Whenever this user will be sending something that will be using TX, it means this way. Let's say that is sending to this user. It means this device will receive it and this will send to TX only. Now this user want to do a communication to this user that will be using TX. It will receive an RX. It will say, okay, TX transmute. And this user want to send something to this user that will say, okay, TX transmit. This will receive and this will transmit. If you see. We do not have any kind of collision here. They have their own separate path to do the communication, right? It means whenever any of the user will try to do any of the communication, right? They have a separate path, right? So when I talk about this one, it has a separate path. It has a separate path and it has a separate path, right? And for this also, it will be having a separate path, right? For this also, it will be having a separate path. Correct? Any questions, any doubt till this point about the full duplex? So it means now, if someone asks about simplex, half duplex, 
or full duplex, you can easily answer, right? All of you, I'm sure, right? <laughs> yes, sir. So guys, tell me who is having the doubt in these three things. Anyone? Any guys, if someone asks about the about these things, just explain the concept of Rx and Tx. That is the real story about, or we can say behind this duplex mechanism. Okay. When we say uh, uh, half, they really do not understand this information. But when we say full, yes, they understand this information. Okay. It is clear. Sure. Uh, uh, like you mentioned that uh, while A is giving uh, sending to B and B is sending to C. So it will be same time. It's not like uh, a pair, like uh, if I consider the middle one uh, in your above diagram. Okay. So it will be communication. Uh, so if I say left A, uh, right B and C, and this one is X. So uh, want, if A want to go to C and B want to uh, go to A. Mm -hmm. And uh, same time this communication can happen. Like it, it will not be like A to X and X to B or uh, okay good I'm question. my point like yeah 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 i'm getting your question okay let me explain a few more things okay uh, we have this in the future things no worries i'll just explain a bit information let's say uh this user want to do a communication uh to this user and at the same time to this user this is your question right manmohan if i'm not wrong yeah and uh, they also want to send yeah, they also yeah, want to one, one. So let's say what I want here, this user itself want to do a, uh, want to send the packet out to both users. So it has the same path, right? So if let's say in the very starting, it is sending to this one and that communication is happening, but at the same time, if I'll try to do something to this user, so what will happen over there in the cable, right? What happens actually, uh, when we talk about the layers in future, we'll talk about the layers at the layer two, we have a field that is your preamble field. What they do basically, whenever any of the single user has a multiple data, right? To send over the wire, this preamble kind of thing, manage the speed of the data. It means one by one, it will execute. Let's say now I do have two packets or, uh, I do have, let's say two lakh packets, including the packets to this user, to this user, it will be using a constant speed to push one, two, three, four till two lakh packets. Okay. It will be having constant, constant speed, right? It is like, I do have a path where, uh, I'm just putting a one nano car and one Ferrari, but if let's say I will not put the constant speed over there, I will not say, I will say you can use your own speed. It means there will be a collision always. Right. But if I'll say you can just go up to 40 kilometer per hour, it means will not be having any issues over the segment, right? Same here. When we use preamble that define a uh, speed of the packet. Okay. Manmohan. Yeah. So it's more like, uh, we are time stepping different packets, uh, for um, the transmission. Time stamp will be there. Definitely. Uh, but there's a speed in the gigahertz something. Okay. It means a fixed, a fixed communication, or we can say a fixed, um, a fixed speed here. We have to push the packet out to the wire just one by one, uh, take a gap, send it, take a gap, send it, take a gap, send it. Okay. With a unified okay, speed. Perfect. Yeah, but don't worry when, when I'll start the layers and I'll talk about the layer two, right? I'll again come to this part and we'll explain a few more things inside it. Okay. But yeah, there will not be any common, any, uh, collision over there. If this user will try to send the data out to both users at the same time. Okay. Okay. Cool. Now, next thing. Okay. Duplex we did and the communication we did. One more thing we have is, mm, okay. uh, yeah, Rohan. Uh, Rohan, you are not audible. Uh, Rohan, your voice is breaking. Okay. Next thing let us discuss. Um, okay. Everything is done. Right. 
now we can move to the devices okay okay guys let's take a break of 10 minutes okay and then we will start okay just 10 minute break thank you
Okay, guys. Uh, shall we start? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Manmohan, Rohan, Sandeep, Trilok. Shall we start? Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. We were talking about the hub, right? So, hub is a device that we use to. do a communication oh we forget one more thing yeah what is lan what is when and this also any idea about these four mechanism anyone so before that can i ask something uh sorry so can i ask something yes please so not about these but something else yeah please uh, so i want to know that today you are just giving an overview of the devices that are going to be used uh yes right and we will discuss them in depth like later definitely okay so as of now what we are doing here uh we are doing a discussion let's say if i'll try to purchase a phone right so what components it can have what os it can have and what features set it has right but while using whatsapp while using other features how we use those features on that uh, phone that's a different part right so as of now we are uh, we are doing a discussion of the capabilities and the properties and what they can do basically actually okay this we are doing a discussion as of now okay the feature set and about uh, more communication methods we will discuss when we talk about the main routing main switching and kind of thing okay okay so thank you yeah okay so anyone any idea about the lan local area network so local small local area right that's a local area network right what is when when is your wide area. wide area network man is your so metro lifton area network and pan is your personal area network right cool so okay now let us talk about these things what is lan can any of any any of you explain about the lan internally communication using for lan so oh, for a smaller geographical area okay when we say geographic location or area right um uh, that comes something different thing in or under different thing right um other thing a certain department of okay in okay. same campus uh okay okay cool and okay when we say the local area network right that say that we say is a communication within a network within a single network okay and when it comes to the size or the area that it can cover that can be that can be a uh, same floor that can be same building that's it that we can call it as a lan okay so uh, first of all the communication if i talk about the communication guys one minute right? i just need to charge it
Yeah, so when we say LAN, the local area network, right, the local area communication, right, so that comes first of all, comes a, a, a communication within a single network, right, and when we talk about the area, so that cover your uh, same floor or same building, okay, so we can say we are doing communication between users, those are on the same floor and or we can say on the same building, that is called your local area network, clear? Any questions? In the land. Yes. Yeah, suppose the local area network, suppose the person is sitting in first floor and it will communicate with the 10th floor. Yes. Same building. You can, yeah, you can make the communication right. Sir, I have a question here. Hello. Yeah. Sir, I... yeah, yeah, I can hear you. So as you write it down here, like uh, in a single network, like uh, if suppose I have a company here uh, where uh, we have uh, some um, different different routers, like router number one, two, three, and four, and on all the routers uh, we are using different different network here. So now if I talk about all these routers, so are these the member of LAN network or it will be the member of LAN? Um, okay, don't talk about any of the device because as of now we are talking about the uh, the network type, right? So just tell me you have your devices, device number one, device number two, device number three, device number four. Now, now on all the devices we are using different different network like ten dot zero network, twenty dot zero network, thirty dot zero network like this. Okay, uh, if you see here, what this, what this says, this says a single network or a different network. Single network. I think that is clear, right? Okay. Because you are talking about now different networks, right? And I'm specifying here exactly here that is a single network. Right? Okay. So we cannot say like uh, we are using a different thing, right? Okay, sir, but uh, just like you know, like uh, about a LAN network, uh, like a physical location, uh, create key over OEP network, that is called as LAN network. As I know, no, sir. Never, so never, never, never. Same as single network we have to take, okay? Okay. So, so we, we have, have a device have... that is connected to another, let's say we have a device over here that is connected to another device, okay? Now I'm not talking about which device here we have, okay? And few more devices are connected here. And if these devices are in the same network, okay, so that's a line. And sir, just uh, many scenarios in the past, like the different network, okay, then uh, what we are going to call it? Okay, as of now we have not done it. Just wait for the next. Okay, sir. Okay, anyone any questions in the land? No. All clear? Renish, Rohan, Sandeep. Any questions if you have, you can ask guys. All clear till this point? Cool. Now, when we say, uh, okay, I'll jump to PAN, right? That's called your personal area network, right? So that is again a communication within a network or within a single network let me just make it more clear within a single network now when we talk about the range that is just a limited range okay limited range it means let's say uh, what i'm doing here i want to share some files to my friends right and i'm using my my phone hotspot Okay, that will act as your pen. It means like I have a phone over here. I am just broad broadcasting my signals over the hotspot, right? And other users are there and they will connect via this hotspot, right? And then finally they will start getting the information. So that is that kind of concept. We can say that's a pen, a single network communication, but with a limited range of the network, that's a pen, personal area network. Okay. It is clear. Any questions, any doubt at this point in the pan? 
Uh, so what is the uh, like uh, range of band network? I am not confirmed, but uh, as I know, like uh, I am not confirmed, sir. Uh, it is ten meter. Is it correct? Uh, we can say again that is up to your uh, device capability. Let's say I do have a phone that just support the five meter. Uh, I do have a very good phone that supports might be fifteen meter, might be right. So I'm just talking about the hotspot. Now you can uh, you can go to the phone uh, website and can check what kind of uh, length that has or the area they cover in the hotspot. Okay. So we are saying that it's a hotspot. So it means whatever range that has in the hotspot, right? That is your pan personal area net. That's a limited range. We can say, right? We cannot go beyond that range. Correct. That's a very limited. When we say land that has same floor, same building, it means we can extend it to other building also. That is up to the design, what design you're trying to create. But when we say hotspot, that is very limited, right? Clear. Any questions, guys? Anyone? Sandeep, Simran, Trilok, Manmohan. Any questions? Sir, basically, LAN and PAN are same, only difference in range. It's exactly correct. Right. Okay. Now, when we see the man, metropolitan area network, can you tell me anyone something about this man? Man between communicating to one area to another area, sir. Uh, okay, when we say area, can we just simplify this part? Chennai. Uh, city. City. When we say city, that comes in a different way. Okay. Oh. Yeah. We can say a communication within a campus. When we say campus, campus comes under uh, the range of one kilometer, two kilometer, right? So if we have a range of one or two kilometer, right, that is called a campus, right? So a campus design is called as your man. Okay. It is clear. Yes, sir. Or we, we let's say uh, we have five kilometer range, right? Or 10 kilometer range. We can call it like, uh, um, we can call it man, right? But when we talk about the big range, right? We never use a kind of device that use that we use in the land, man, or pan. Okay. So, okay. Any questions in the man? So we can say these are uh, almost same, right? In the way of the communication or in the way of the uh, design, right? In the man, what we can do, we can use a kind of device or we can say other device that we use on the van, right? But that is up to the design. But when we see in the normal terms, yeah, within a campus, within a design. Okay. It's also a single network. Uh, okay. Again, that is up to the design. You want to, you want to use the same network or you want to use a different network. Okay. Sir, man, man. Yep. Yeah, man. Right. Man is also single network. Uh, is a single network, but if you want to segregate it, right, you can do. Okay. Oh. Let's say you have a design of, uh, let's say you have a campus, right? Now you don't want to use uh, the same network everywhere. You can use the different network also, but the area that covers or uh, that has the concept, right? That's called the man only. Okay. And when we go for the van, that are very different technology here. It means when we talk about the van. That is the communication between cities and two geographical location. And this was about the range between two different network. Okay. So a communication between two different network. And that covers a range of the cities of two or two geographic location. That is called your wide area network. Clear? Anyone, any doubt at this point? Dilip, Manmohan, Pooja, Simran, Trilok. No, sir. Okay. No. Next one. <laughs> 
Rohan, your voice is still breaking. Okay, now we can move to the revised hub. When we say hub, sir, I have one question. Hello, here. Mm -hmm. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, I I can hear you. Yeah, sir. Suppose I am in the same building and we are using the routers and we are using a different networks. We have the different uh -huh. departments for that. We are using the different networks. Uh huh. In between that, we are using the routers. So uh -huh. different network is there. So it will be considered under the LAN or it will be considered under the band. Okay. Okay. So let me draw a design where we have a router. Okay. And a switch is there. Few users are there. A switch is there. A few users are there. That's the same network and that's a different network, right? So whenever we need, when we do a communication from here to here, okay, we call it a inter network communication. When we say inter network communication, if you see this is called your internet, right? And when we say internet, now that is up to your range. So we can call it WAN, we can call it WAN, right? But this kind of design, we call it only internet for communication, okay? Because when we talk about the WAN, that comes uh, with that range of the cities, that comes with the range of the geographical location even, uh, to different um, countries even, right? But this communication is just a internet or, internet or communication, okay, Thilo? Yes, yes. So this will be considered under the band. Uh, we can, we can think about this one. We can say, right. But when we say actually the van, the things come into mind, right. That's a two different cities, two different geographic location or two different, uh, what do we call it? Two different, um, countries. Okay. Yeah. So okay. when, we, yeah, when we talk about this kind of design, we will not say that's a van. We will say that's a internet or communication only. Okay. Okay. We are doing a communication between two different LAN and that is called as your internet or communication. Okay. When we say these two type of communication, when we say intra and inter, these two terms we will discuss further. Definitely intra, it means intra network, same network, inter network that is called your different network. And when we, when we say we are accessing internet, we are not actually, actually accessing internet. That is your, in, that is your other LAN communication. It means. I'm here at my home. I'm connected to my Wi-Fi router that is connected to ISP. Okay. Somewhere in the U S that has ISP that has a device and that has a Google server over there. Right? So what we are doing from this LAN, we are trying to access other LAN, right? But that comes under two geographical location, right? Two different countries. That's why we are saying it is a van. So if you see the same design, if I talk about here, a LAN and a LAN, they are doing a communication same here, a LAN and a LAN, they are doing a communication, but here, the area that is very short area, but here, if I talk about that's a very lengthy area, right? Yes. yes. Correct. So this concept is a true when, when uh, concept, but here this, we say just a inter network communication. Okay. Okay. Sir. Yeah. So when we say internet, that is not internet that is called inter network communication. Okay. Internet, this is actually a inter network communication. Okay. okay. Any questions, any doubt at this point? Look. No, sir. Thanks. Great. So guys, um, if uh, you don't know about the router, if you don't know about the switch, what here we have done, don't worry. We'll discuss in future about these things. Okay. Because as of now, we are going to talk about the devices. So that time we'll get to know, okay, what, which device we are talking about? What is the use of these devices? One by one. Okay. Okay. Any questions before starting the devices? Anyone? Anyone guys? No, sir. Okay, cool. Now. When we say hub, that is a, first of all, a plug and play device. Or we call it non-manageable. 
it means whenever i want to use a hub i can just do one thing i can uh, i can buy a box i i can buy a hub ride and i can connect the uh, device into the network and the devices will start doing the communication fine that's a non manageable when you see non manageable or manageable right non manageable it means i can't do anything that's just a plug and play device when i say manageable it means i can do some configuration i can do some uh, tweaking i can do some changes over there but this is a non manageable it means i can't do anything i can't do any change over there okay few more things are here hub is a dumb device that really do not uh, do not understand rx and tx now when we say that does not understand rx and tx so which kind of de device you can explain uh, you can uh, refer a uh, method simplex half duplex or full duplex trilog half duplex uh, uh, sorry half duplex sir half duplex half so hub is a half duplex device okay so when we say a device that do not understand the rx and tx yes that's a half duplex okay hub does not have does not have a memory so the hub will not be having any kind of storage over there it means the device hub cannot uh, cannot have a kind of storage to use to do the forwarding it means what happens in the case of hub it will receive bits and will do copy and paste it means let's say we have a box over here okay our device is connected over here our device is can we are talking about two pins let's see now okay device over here device over here and one pin here so whenever this device will send let's say using tx it will receive it fine what it will do as this device does not have any capability it means that don't know who is a who is b who is c who is 10.1 who is 10.2 it will do one thing whatever it is receiving here it will copy and it will paste on this interface it will paste on these two interfaces it means whatever it receive on any other interface it will just do a copy and it will paste to all of the interfaces it means this device do always broadcast it means if this device receive a unicast packet multicast packet or a broadcast packet it will always do a broadcast always reason whenever someone ask what is the reason why the hub do a broadcast that really do not understand rx and tx and that really do not have any kind of storage to understand where we have to send that's why the hub device will just receive will copy everything and will send out to all of the interfaces okay it is clear any questions any doubt guys dilip any question deep manmohan no sir all clear till this point guys please tell me like if this is not clear i can explain again from scratch right uh, sandeep you know, uh, if we put this uh, inside a uh, multicast or unicast of scenario so it it will give, uh, lead to collision ah uh, yes yes definitely nowadays we do not use a hub right but yes if i'll start using, start using hub definitely there will be some collision over there right so that's why we call it hub is a single collision and single broadcast domain okay so we call it single collision and single broadcast domain clear any questions to this point when we say single collision single broadcast now let me draw a diagram it will be more clear then let's say i do have a hub i do have another hub okay i do have one more hub let's say that is connected to a user that is connected to a user 
that is connected to a user, that is connected to a user, that is connected to a user, and one more user are here. Whenever this device will send a packet out here, let's say uh, now again, if that is a unicast, a multicast, or broadcast, the device will always do a broadcast. That packet will move out here. That packet will, will move out here. That hub will say, oh, I'm getting a packet. That will move out here. That will move out here. It will say, oh, I'm getting a packet. So that will move out here also. It will say, okay, fine. I will do a broadcast. It means if you see the packet was originated from here, that is actually trying to cover. This complete domain. So whenever you have, you have a design only with the hub that is complete your single broadcast domain clear. So whenever we have a design with a hub only, so we call it broadcast domain, a single broadcast domain. I'm sure this is clear, right? It means if you send one, any packet, then it will be transmitted to the every interfaces of the connection. Yes, right, right. The log. Because what the hub says, whenever I will get anything, I will do copy and paste, right? Yes. Okay. It means same here. This hub is saying I'm getting some packets and, and I will send it to both. This will again say, I'm getting something over here. I have to send to both, right? That's it. Correct. Uh, Trilog, any Sir, here single collision means. Okay. I'm not talking about uh, collision. I'm saying single broadcast domain as of now. Okay. Oh, okay. So a packet that will cover your complete domain till that point, we have a single broadcast domain clear. So if someone asks about the definition of the single, uh, about the broadcast domain, so you can say, uh, a packet that covers your domain, a broadcast packet that covers your domain, right? That covers your, let's say multiple routers. Those multiple routers are the part of the single broadcast domain. Okay. It is clear. Trilog, Deep, Manmohan, Pusha. Okay. Next thing. Now what is collision domain? Let's say, um, at the same time, if this device will send something, First of all, the collision will be here and that collision will be out here on this interface will be out here on this interface will be out here on this interface. This hub says, oh, some collision is here. So if some collision is here, so that collision will affect this port, the collision will affect this port. This will say, oh, I have a collision. So that collision will affect this port and this port. It means if I'll be having a single collision over there, any, anywhere, right on the interface that actually that collision actually covers your complete domain. It means that affect your complete network. So that's why we are saying whenever we have a design of hub, that's a single collision and single broadcast domain. Okay. Now you can ask your questions if any. Uh, sir, please explain the collision domain again. Yes, yeah, sure. Let's say I do have a hub. I do have another hub. They are connected. This is connected to another hub. Device number one, device number two, device number three, device number four, device number five, device number six. Okay. Uh, this is sending some packet out here. And whenever this will send, the packet will be sent out to all of the users, right or wrong? Right there, lock? Yes, yes. Okay. Now at the same time, if I'll do a communication from here, whenever I will send the packet out here, the device will try to send the packet out to all the interfaces. Same here, this device will try to send the packet out to all the interfaces, right? Now what will happen here everywhere? The collision will occur, right? What will happen? It means a single, a single port collision will affect your complete domain because you are connected with the hub. That's why. So a design with the hub will have a complete collision, not a single port, complete collision. If something happens over here, right, that affects your complete domain. It means this complete network will be down. Okay. okay. It is clear. Yes. Yes. Uh, but what about the preamble which you have mentioned before? Okay. Preamble. Uh, when we say preamble, right, as the hub device do not understand these things, what they do basically that just receive the bits. And they just send the bits. It means 
if we if the packets are going in a single way that is maintaining the speed of that part if something happens like this that is not the part of the collision right manmohan and yeah. here what is happening the collision is happening right it means we are getting the constant speed data in this way and we are getting a constant speed data in this way then there will be a collision so premal is used to put this uh, we can say gap between data but that does not take care of this part right uh, clear manmohan yes uh, manmohan if you have any questions you can ask okay if not clear you can ask you mean sir ki if the same moment if the two uh, devices or the same port is receiving and transmitting the collision will happen and the whole network will be collapsed yes, uh, yeah, exactly correct right right because that's a hub design that's why okay okay, okay. yeah hub will try to send the packet out to everywhere and once it will try there will be a collision okay okay yeah why is called a single collision uh, yeah because if something happens here that is basically uh that is trying to cover all the interfaces and just because of trying to cover all the interfaces everywhere will be the collision that's why we are saying a single collision domain okay that is clear anis yes okay, okay great uh, okay one more thing here uh i was about to share mm -hmm. yeah okay cool i'll discuss now the next thing is your bridge or about switches okay when we say bridge and switches what difference we have they both are almost same devices okay and the hub we use in the lan network okay not in the other only, only in the lan we use okay uh, or when we have the same network communication because that is receive and send the data okay now second thing when we talk about the bridge and switches right so these devices basically work okay uh, the hub works at layer 1 guys okay about the osi model i'll discuss later as of now just for the reference you can make it this works at physical layer okay so manmohan if when we talk about the preamble bit right so preamble is a part of the uh, layer 2 and the hub device works okay. at the layer 3 so that really do not have any idea about those things so that will just receive and send it okay okay got it yeah now when we talk about the bridges and switches right so as of now for the understanding you can just say that works at layer 3 we can layer 2 we can have the layer 3 switches also but uh, about that part we'll discuss later when we start the routing part or switching part okay as of now just remember switch and bridge works at layer 2 at the data link layer again what is data link layer what is layer 2 layer 1 don't worry this is just for the reference here as of now in future we will discuss okay what is the difference between first of all bridge and switches right these devices are having basically low number of ports we can say bridge has a low number of ports uh, three or four ports but the switch will be having the higher number of ports like 8 16 24 48 right and uh, when i talk about the other features those are exactly same that we had in the bridge the same we have in the switch so when we say the i'm not using bridge i'm using switch because of the number of ports okay so whatever we discuss the things we discuss about the switch that is same for the bridge also expecting your number of ports okay next thing the bridge and switch they understand rx and tx if they understand rx and tx that's a full duplex device right if a switch receive a unicast that can do unicast because that has the power to read some layer to information that has the power to uh, to store some data when we say multicast and that still do broadcast clear 
that still do a broadcast any questions any doubt all clear please do a multicast unicast and broadcast all these three yes okay again whenever the bridge or switches get the unicast traffic that that can that can do the unicast but when we say multicast and broadcast that comes under only broadcast it means bridge and switch they just support unicast and broadcast they don't know what is multicast okay if they receive a multicast packet they will do a broadcast okay clear trilok yes yes sir. okay great few more things the switch and bridge as we are saying they can do unicast it means they have the power to store user data user data it means the mac address so they maintain the switch maintain or the device maintains mac address table okay so it is like you have a switch these are three users user 1 user 2 user 3 the mac address is are here a b and c whenever a want to communicate to b yes can do whenever c want to do a communication to b yes they can do whenever a want to do a communication to c yes that can do clear because of so it is so uh, so just for understand so because of the understanding of the mac address and tx rx so even yeah. if they and the uh, knowledge of this l2 preamble So even if they do broadcast, also they they are not having convenience, right? Yes, right, exactly. Because if this will say broadcast, right? It will be using TX, it will be using RX, and it will be using TX and TX only to do that broadcast even, right? Okay, got it. Yeah. So uh, to store the, it has the power to store the data. Data it means the MAC address, MAC address it can store of the users, right? And how to store? Now again, what is MAC address? Uh, how it will store how many mac address we can store what is the time of the store that part basically we will discuss in the switching when we come to switching part right because that's a internal thing of the switch or we can say protocols behavior of the switch right so as of now we are again doing a discussion only about the capabilities and what they can do that's it okay and few features basically okay so yeah these things are done now next thing when we go for the collision and broadcast right so this comes under single broadcast domain so that comes under single broadcast domain and per port collision domain so we have two things here Uh, per port collision and single broadcast domain how this comes now let us discuss we have a switch we have a switch let's say i'm sending a broadcast packet out here the switch will say oh i am getting a broadcast so i have to broadcast out to both ports fine this switch will say oh i'm getting a broadcast i have to broadcast out to all the ports fine it means whenever a switch gets a packet or whenever you have a design where you have only switches and you are getting a broadcast packet that covers your complete domain basically of all the switches that's how we are saying that comes under single broadcast domain clear uh trilok rajesh any doubt till this point no sir just like the hub can also single broadcast domain hub and yes exactly the hub and switches if i talk about the broadcast domain yes they cover a single broadcast domain but due to different reasons not about the same reason okay hub has a different reason the switch has a different reason okay now when we say per port collision as we know they understand rx and tx rx tx rx tx rx tx rx tx rx tx and rx and tx let's say something happens here again when we say rx and rx and tx i told you these things are the are because of the set of the commands that we have configured on the device or we can set uh, the the property of the os right so let's assume due to some reason due to power failure due to some interface script bug 
due to some reason the device forget which one will act as a rx and which one will act as a tx let's assume that forget this part so there will be a collision but that collision will affect only that port because these nodes oh yes this is rx and this is tx this is rx and this is tx so due to some power failure on the interface or due to some interface uh, scripting issues right that interface will forget which which bit which pin we have to use for the rx which pin we have to use for the tx so the device uh, will just have the collision only on the single port that's what we are saying this is a per port collision if, if something happens on the port that will remains on the same port that will never affect your other interfaces it means if you see one two three four and five we have five ports are over here right so we call it we have five collision domain here okay it is okay, clear but same, um, i'm a little confused here so when this uh, l2 is a layer two device, sorry switch and these are layer two device so they know uh -huh. the mac address they know the tx and rx okay uh -huh. maybe because of the, uh, this issue for time period, or you can say in starting, like uh, they don't know how to configure TXR and So mm -hmm. at that time could be a collision, but uh, once they know the knowledge, so they will be again, you know, they have TXRS information, they have MAC address, they have- uh, We'll start on the communication, yeah. Then it, it will not be having yeah. any uh, any com any collision over there, right? But I'm so, saying, uh, let's say this is your running network. Okay, this is your running network. Okay, and somehow we have a collision over there. And what are the chances or what are the pops possibilities due to power failure of the interface only? Because when you talk about the uh, devices, they have their own separate module for every single interface, right? They have the power supply inside it, right? So any power failure for the same interface or any scripting issue in the, uh, any bug in the scripting, right? Or any scripting issues due to that part, if something happens there, there will be a collision because the device will forget which one will act as a rx and which one will act as a tx because we say rx and tx your scripting allow a device to understand which pin i have to use for the rx which pin i have to use for the tx okay clear manmohan yeah but okay it will be not a permanent collision domain no right yeah so again it means what i have to do there i have to reload the box or i have to do rma that's it these are the two options then we have okay to resolve it because that is that is uh, something that a network engineer cannot uh, handle because that is something inside the box or that is something inside the scripting right it means a developer or the development team that has done these scripting they can look out in this into this part right so as a network engineer if something happens on the interface we just say it uh, interface issue sometimes happens okay uh, let's say uh, i'm using an old device right i'm using a switch that is a very old switch right sometimes we, we we will not be able to use any of the interface that we say that interface is not working why that interface is not working due to some power failure inside or due to some scripting issues on interface right guys might we have seen somewhere like a port is not working right yeah. so, so why that just because of the power failure on the interface or the scripting issue right even when we say power failure but the scripting but in that case we say that like, this port is not working rather so uh, what i yeah. assume is so we are not using that port for the connectivity exactly so when we say collision actually that port does not allow any communication right so kind of same thing right we are saying not working the collision is here or we are just saying not working right both are equivalent to each other correct yeah, Manmohan, it is clear to you? Yes. Uh, okay, great. Uh, Trilog, any questions from your side? Deep, Pooja, Renes, Rohan, Sandeep, anyone, guys? Zimran? No, sir. Thanks. Okay, great. When we talk about a router that understand, first of all, uh, that works at the layer three. At the network layer okay that has a per port collision why per port collision because that understand rx and tx and if something happens that will be happen only for the single interface per port broadcast even per port broadcast it means the router we use to connect to different lan it means if I have a router here, I have two switches over here. This is a different LAN. This is a different LAN. I don't, and I don't want 
a broadcast of this single LAN send out to this broad to this other LAN, right? It means whenever a router receive a broadcast on the interface that breaks the broadcast domain, and whenever it will get a broadcast over here, that will break the broadcast over here. Okay. It means that's a per port broadcast domain. It means something comes here that will remain here. If something comes here as a broadcast, that will remain here. Okay, guys. So the router is a per port collision and the per port broadcast. Okay. It is clear. You mean in the same router, if there are two or multiple interfaces are there, so it will only broadcast to that respective ports only. Exactly. Correct. It means if something it is receiving, it will not send the broadcast out to other interface. It can just send a unicast. Okay. Yes. Yes. Sir. So when we talk about the communication. Unicast, yes, it can receive on the interface and it can send it to other interface. But when we say broadcast and multicast, what actually does the router? It break the domain. It means if some multicast or broadcast comes here, that will just remain here in the same land that will not move to other land. Okay. That is clear. Any questions? Break domain means sir. Uh, domain again. Um, domain we are saying like uh, this is a single broadcast domain and this is a single broadcast domain. So whenever something happens in this domain, in this broadcast domain, that broadcast will never move to the another domain. That's why I'm saying here domain. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It is clear about the unicast broadcast and multicast. Any questions, anyone? Okay. If that is clear, uh, Simran, this is clear to you. Jayad. Yes. Sir. Okay, great. Okay. Next in the router is, um, that's about full duplex as we know. Okay, I think everything is clear. So in the switches for duplex unicast. Okay. So this router, when we say the switch that store the MAC addresses. So this router maintains two types of table. One is your routing table. It means it will maintain destination IP address. So whatever we have in the routing table, that is basically for the destination. And it will maintain the ARP table. ARP table is is more like combination of IP address plus your MAC address. Okay. As of now, you can just remember this part. Like we have two tables, routing table and the app table. And when we, uh, when we start the routing part, I'll, I'll explain this part. What is this ARP table and what is this routing table? Okay. I'll explain this part later, but as of now, just remember this part, a router maintains two types of table, routing table and the app table, right? In the routing table, it will maintain the distance and IP addresses. But the ARP table maintains the IP address plus MAC address, or we can say uh, IP address of only um, directly connecting neighbor. It means, uh, let's say we have 10 route hopes away router, right? So ARP table does not have those entries that will have the entry. Let's say we have this design. So whenever this device will maintain the ARP table, that will have the information of this device, of this device and of this device only. Not about this and this and this device. Okay. So app table maintains only the connected neighbor information. Okay. And the MAC address of the interfaces. Clear. Any questions, any doubt? And why, why this reason? When I'll start the routing part, I'll discuss why. Why this device should not maintain these interfaces, these IP address in the app table and the, the MAC of these interfaces. I'll explain once we start the routing. But as of now, these are the information we have in the router. Okay. Any questions, any doubt guys? No, sir. Okay. Okay. When we say firewall and the load balancer, so we can say that has the property inbuilt property of the router, whatever it is and your enhancement. So firewall, it means, yes, it will have extra, uh, extra features of, uh, doing, uh, putting the security. When we say load balancer, there is extra features enhancement 
enhancement of doing the load balancing. So whenever router comes with extra security, that becomes your firewall. And whenever a router comes with extra capability with the load balancing thing, that comes your load balancer or F5. Okay. Otherwise, the base concept is exactly same as a router. Okay. So guys, we have done about the devices, right? So any questions to this point, any doubt, any concern, any input? You can ask guys if you have. Sorry, uh, Hyperflex and Uplogix comes under router switch or? Okay, um, yeah, Hyperflex, I, I am first time um, uh, like uh, hearing this one, the, the words you're saying. I don't have any idea. Okay. And Uplogix? I don't have idea. Okay. Yeah. Anyone, any so question? What is ARP, ARP? Okay, Deep, about the ARP, uh, one, once I'll start the routing part, I'll discuss, don't worry, okay? Because that is completely based on your routing part, okay? Okay. Yeah, as of now, just learn that has a, a component or that has a properties of maintaining ARP table. But what is ARP, what it maintains, I'll discuss later, don't worry, when we start the routing part, okay? Any questions? Anyone? Okay, guys. So let's wind up here today, right? And uh, we have done the very basics. Just go through with the video. I'll share the video, right? You can uh, check the videos. And uh, in the next class, first of all, we'll discuss the doubts. Okay, uh, from this uh, from this class, and uh, then we will start something new, some more basics. Okay. And so the timing is yeah, seven or eight. Okay. Okay. For the Saturday, the timing will be eight. And okay, okay, let's do one thing. Uh, I'll discuss in the group. Okay, because mm -hmm. we have few candidates there in the uh, group, right? We are here only eleven candidates, right? Mm -hmm. So yes, I'll... today I missed the session. I say I didn't see the night up to long thirty. Then I didn't see any message in WhatsApp. Okay. So okay. I was joined late today. So no, uh, only uh, exact uh, time is going to study yeah. with each other. Most probably like uh, the seven, we will try. Okay. Sure, if someone sir. has the issues at seven, so we will try to make it eight. But yeah, the standard time we will make it seven. Okay. Seven to ten. Seven to uh, ten, eleven. Eleven. Sorry. Uh, yeah, ten. Three hour session, right? Seven to ten. Sometimes it will be two hour session because sometimes let's say uh, we are learning IP addressing and subnetting. That time we need a gap, right? Because in one go, if I'll try to explain everything, that will be a mesh for you, right? So that depends on the protocol. As of now, today what we are learning, uh, we have we are we are trying to learn the base very basics, right? It means everyone is every the things we have uh, uh, checked, right? As of now, so those are very basics and easily understandable, right? But when we come to the IP addressing the subnetting part. So that time we might spend only two hours a day, right? And when we start some other features like OSI model, we might spend three hours a day, right? So that depends on your uh, protocol even, okay? Mm -hmm. But, but we will not try... more than three hours, right? No more than three hours. Okay. Yeah. We'll be very happy okay. for all of you even, right? Uh, can you add in group? I'm not in the group. Uh, Is it okay. in group? Yeah, sure. I'll add. Yeah, I'll add. Don't worry. Yeah. yeah, Neeraj, when just uh, um, like when, once you conclude, so uh, in the end uh, for five, six minutes, just go through from the top to bottom, just summarize like so that it will be, you know, just an overview so that what we discussed today. So something like that. If next time, next time, what will be helpful. Uh, okay, guys, um, basically we have not done too much, right? So these things uh, we can do, right? Because we are learning n numbers of things, right? It will take time to explain these things, right? So uh, just do one thing after the sessions, just go through with the things because we have a doubt session even in the next class, right? So once you start going through with the things, because I, my mist by mistake, I can miss something here. Because if you see in the screen, we have n numbers of things, right? I can... I might be missed something here, right? And it's explaining these things. So just go one by one, check the recording, right? And then in the next class, we can have the doubt session. Okay, Manmohan? Because we have n numbers of things, right? So or more we talked about the basics only. Yes. So while sending the video, kindly mention the date, sir, in the recording session. I'll mention day-wise. 
okay i'll mention the date no worries no because worries. you can easily to identify otherwise they can using the class wise day one day two day three so what do you want like it should be on the day wise or it should be on the uh, date wise date wise sir. okay sure i'll put it on the date wise no worries sir i have one practical question yes yeah suppose we have one device okay oh. and through that device i have connected my laptop through the lan cable okay okay and i want to access any application okay which is hosted on another server uh -huh. which is through the internet okay okay but whenever i want to access the application i am not able to access that application okay oh. so that we have check whether the my lan port is properly working or not or whether the device lan port is working or not okay so we have ping ourselves and the next device i have ping that is also pinging okay okay so laptop is connected through the modem so i am able to ping the modem okay okay but i'm not able to access the application but whenever we change the lan cable i am able to access the application so how we can determine that there was a problem in the lan cable and how we can convince the user that the lan cable having the problem because i was able to ping the modem so how can we say the lan cable having the problem but while changing the lan cable i am able to able to access the application it means that there was problem in the lan cable mm, okay yeah as you are explaining the situation right so that's the issue of the lan cable but when we say the lan cable using that cable i am able to ping the device but i am not able to access any application right yeah, i am just able to ping the just next device which is physically connected i am able to ping the modem only okay yeah not able to ping the server ip or application ip okay okay so okay okay uh, so is here uh, what we can do okay if we have those cables handy right you can do one thing you can check the color coding because in future once we'll start talking about the the color coding of the cables right what happens at that time if i will use a different color coding so we have a color coding like orange white orange green white blue blue white green brown white brown if i'll try to use the same combination the standard mechanism right everything will be fine if by mistake i'll use a different combination because 1 2 3 and 6 com th these four pins we use for the communication but with a spe specified colors okay so if i'm using the same colors right so nothing no worries right but if i'm using a different color over there on these pins right there will be some issues okay so i am using the same type of lan cable suppose it is a cross cable so i am using the yeah. cross cable okay if that's a cross cable right just check both cables which color coding they have okay so the issues you are getting in the cable that will be having a different color coding i'm sure okay maybe the issue of the rx and tx as you said there are two when we, RX, when we say rx and tx that comes under your device capability not about the uh, wire capability okay okay yeah that comes under your capability of the device only not about the wire because nowadays we use a smart devices they actually just consider which one is rx which one is tx behalf of your cable type or behalf of your uh, device type okay <laughs> so once i'll start the uh, the combinations what we use and the colors coding what we use that time you'll have the clarity about this point okay, okay and the sir. thing i have told you just check it the, those colors you can just verify okay okay thank you coding any questions any other questions guys anyone no sir so now uh, so, means uh, these uh, previously there was a issue like uh, straight and cross cables uh, some features were done by cross and some one by straight but now i think device uh, as you are also mentioning so we can uh, do whatever like uh, yes we, we can, can use both type of right we can use any cable for the any communication but don't worry uh, manmohan just wait for few more classes right i'll discuss in the deep okay because nowadays we have the smart devices so they just negotiate automatically Uh, uh hello uh, sir i have a query actually uh, regarding like a timing actually okay. so saturday timing is a different and sunday is different okay we are just planning for 7 to 10 okay okay it will it will not uh, 8 to 11 uh you wanted 8 to 11 
Yes, actually, because uh, uh, Saturday, Sunday is uh, my night shift uh, will going actually. So okay. and my night shift is over around seven thirty and uh, seven forty five. Okay. So that's why I'm. Um, okay, okay, okay. No worries. So guys, we can do one thing. Uh, the Sunday we can have seven to ten. Okay, and uh, the Saturday we can have eight to ten or ten thirty or eleven. Okay, this we can do. Okay, guys. Okay. I'll put in the group. Okay, and this video uh will I'll upload on see. the Google Drive. Okay, and I'll share the link. You can directly check the videos online. Okay. Okay. I'll Thank you. That link. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, guys? So last question, thoda ye rough sa hoga. Next time se thoda vaise taaki notes banane mein easy ho na. Um. Okay. I'll try. Yeah. Any other questions, guys? Uh, so while uh, discussing this, so uh, can we allocate this with uh, this uh, CCNM book uh, book also? Right. Um. Okay. So guys, what you can do, you can uh, I'll share a ebook. That's a Toad Lamley. As a fresher, Toad Lamley is more than enough, guys. Okay. So just go with the Toad Lamley, whatever it has, what concept it has, right? Just go with it. Okay. So I'll share an ebook to you on the same link on the Google Drive link. I'll upload this ebook. Okay. Uh, Manmohan, oh. you had any other questions for the same one? No, no, it's okay. okay. I just was like uh, more concern, like uh, whatever we discussed. So just uh, share like which uh, all part was equivalent to the section so that okay. we can go through the book. Also. When we say, yeah, when we see the books, they, that might have. Uh, uh, First, that might have something in the last. That might have something in the middle, right? Because that's a book, right? So what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Understand, but yeah. just like sections, like oh, this one. Yeah. So have. yeah, I'll just I always recommend the Toad Lamley book. Okay, so I'll share this ebook to a uh, Google Drive, and you can just uh, have a look and download it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So in weekdays, we can you know at least cover up. Uh, yeah. Uh, book that uh, what we discussed. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. We will cover cover more than Toad Lamely. Don't worry. The things we don't have in the Toad Lamely, we will discuss those things also. Okay, so don't worry. Great. You guys will be like uh, very expert in the CCNA and the networking thing. Don't worry. <laughs>